You're watching Swipe on the show this week. Keeping the Navy ship shape, we find out how you design a warship 21st century style. The Assassin's back, but does our gaming guru believe in the latest version of the Creed? And hanging up, a blow to the once mighty Nokia. Hello and welcome to Swipe from Portsmouth Naval Base. Now, imagine designing your own warship and then being able to test it, improve it, and even walk inside it before it's even been constructed. Well, technology typically used for video games is now making that possible. We sent Russell to find out more. Shipbuilding has come a long way since the days when the SS Canberra first put to sea. And gaming technology is now transforming how ships are designed. The latest virtual reality, familiar to fans of the likes of GTA and Assassin's Creed, is allowing BAE systems to construct full-scale 3D prototypes of the warships they're working on, which designers and engineers can navigate in an immersive setup so real it feels like you're actually on board. It's delivering an absolutely fundamental change in how we're doing our engineering. We're getting in with the customer, our regulator, and we're looking at the design, ironing out any issues that we have now so that we're not taking the ship apart later and then having to rebuild it twice. The company's engineers are using it to design a new range of offshore patrol vessels for the Royal Navy. They used to have to build full plywood models of ships to try to decide what might work and what might not. But now in the visualisation suite, engineers can make their way onto the bridge, below decks, even down individual pipes. They can move around anywhere on the vessel, examining specific areas, equipment and systems, looking at the design from any angle, identifying and fixing any potential design problems. It's really exciting. It's a bit like working in a real-life video game, so I can go in, immerse myself within the warship, I can start to look around as if I was in the Navy, and it's really useful for developing my skills as an engineer and as a designer. So I get to get, start to get a feel of what it's like to actually use the product before we ever have to build anything. The technology also means they can work more closely with suppliers and customers, bringing them into the design process at an earlier stage. But despite all the benefits, not everyone is convinced about the merits of technology. I think it has to be used with caution, though. It isn't the answer to everything. And we have to remember that warfare is fundamentally a human activity, and humans, I'm afraid, are fundamentally inefficient. So when you match technology with humans, you have to allow for the fact that there will be a certain amount of inefficiency and unpredictability in it. Uh, and that's what war is all about. So we have to train our people and the technology together to make sure we get the best results. More simulation technology is in the pipeline at BAE, so they won't be pulling the plug on this project anytime soon. Russell Hope, Sky News. Well, you're joining me now inside the visualisation suite here at Portsmouth Navy Base. And with me is Stephen Kirby, who was instrumental in bringing the suite to BAE Systems. And we're about to go on board. Yes, this is our brand new technology to visualise the Navy's new offshore patrol vessel. Before we go on board, let me just pass you across these goggles which is allow, going to allow you to really feel as if you're on board the ship. And th this is my controller? This is your controller, it's exactly the same as game-based technology. Ooh, okay. So and we'll fly onto the bridge. And this is what an engineer would use? This is what an engineer would use, our Royal Navy customer would use, and it gives us a Ooh. truly immersive experience of being able to see what the design is going to be like in practice when the ship is built, to make sure that we're getting it right first time. So here I am on board, and if I... Oh, look! I can even, I can get down under the desks. Yep. Did so, your engineers take, take a bit of time to get used to this? You know, they pick this up overnight just like that. It's a quantum leap Ooh. forward in terms of their ability to really understand the design. But much more to the point, you can look at that then from the eyes view of the shortest person in the Navy through to the tallest person in the Navy. And that's really giving us confidence that we're getting that design crucially right the first time. And this is great for, for being able to repair things, to be able to see every nook and cranny, really, isn't it? It's, it's giving us an unparalleled feel into what the design really looks like. So we can bring in the guys who are going to produce the ship to make sure they can build it. We can bring in the Navy to Ooh. make sure they can operate it effectively and operate it safely. Walking so I say it's a real quantum leap forward. Walking and over I tell you, it's somebody's great head to here. Use. 
great to use. I just wonder though, is there a downside? Does it mean that this stage of the design process could take a bit longer? Because now the engineers have got so much more to obsess over with this extra detail. Well, actually, it's quite the contrary, because what we're doing now is getting all the people involved in the design together. And first time round, we're enabling us to have a decent discussion so that we nail that design first time. Fantastic. Well, Stephen Kirby, thank you. Thank you for showing me around on the bridge. You're watching Swipe, still to come on the show. It's one of the biggest games releases of the year, but will the new Assassin's Creed put the competition to the sword? But first, here's a roundup of the week's other tech news. It's call over for Nokia's phones. The once global leader in the market has lost its brand name on the new Lumia 535. Microsoft bought the Finnish company's phone division last year. The new Lumia, which sports Microsoft branding on the front and back, runs Windows 8.1 and will cost around £100 when it's released next year. YouTube has launched a paid music subscription service to take on Spotify. It's called YouTube Music Key and it can create playlists and save music to a device to listen to offline. It's also available for free but with adverts. The paid for option has extra features without ads and will start at £7.99 a month for a limited number of users before being available at £9.99 to everyone. Amazon has won the right to sell domain names ending in .book, beating competition from eight companies, including Google. It's believed to have paid up to £6.3 million at a private auction just days after shelling out £2.9 million for .buy. Other domains recently snapped up by tech giants include .dog, .live and .tennis. Apple is facing legal action from a woman in the US after she realised she couldn't receive iMessages after switching from her iPhone 4 to an Android smartphone. Adrian Moore claims it wasn't made clear by Apple before she changed handsets. A California judge says she deserves a chance to show the company disrupted her wireless service contract and violated an unfair competition law by blocking messages meant for her. Some of the biggest titles in gaming have new releases out this week. So we got our games guru, Ross Thompson, to pick a few and give us his candid opinion. This week sees the return of the Assassin's Creed franchise. And actually, you're going to get two games this time around. So first up, for Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and PC, it's Assassin's Creed Unity. So this is set in the 1700s and is all around Paris and the French Revolution. You play as Arno, who is a brand new assassin. And the big thing you'll see from this game is that when you look at the size and scale of Paris itself, the next generation consoles is really going to deliver a much higher graphical quality, but also the level of people that are going to be involved within the gameplay. So normally when you're walking around the city, there's, it's quite vibrant, there's quite a lot going on. That's just going to be 10 times bigger than it was in any previous Assassin's Creed game. So all in all, the game is looking absolutely brilliant. Um, highly recommend it. If you love the Assassin's Creed games and you've got your next generation console or a PC, get this. Hey, Slick, it's me! Grand Theft Auto V was the biggest game of last year on Xbox 360 and PS3, is now finally here for next generation consoles. So PlayStation 4 and Xbox One owners are going to get their hands on it uh, very early on next week. It's not just a straight port of GTA V from the previous generation. So if you've played it on previous consoles, don't worry, I still highly recommend getting it on this because they've added a few new features. The key one they've just recently announced is first person mode. And that whole first person just mode is just going to truly mission. change how GTA is perceived as a game and play. I thought you said you weren't going to hit me. Lego as a video game series has gone from strength to strength over the last few years. The big difference here from the previous two games from the Batman series is that it's not going to be set in Gotham. It's going to be set in the universe. Um, so more in space. And what's happened is Brainiac has come along and he's basically stolen the lantern's rings which are all around the Green Lantern movies. And he's now shrinking people's planets. And so it's up to you as Batman and Robin and all the other DC characters to basically save the day. So you're going to have to leave Gotham behind and go into space and around all the different areas of the universe that the Lantern Brainiac takes you. It's a game for everybody. Uh, it's available on pretty much every format you can basically get on, whether it's a home console or even handheld. Uh, and I highly, highly recommend it.
Well, that's it for this week, but don't forget you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories on Sky News through iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com, and our YouTube channel. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.